Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Derek Elliott from Derek.com and today's video is brought to you by the kind folks at Squarespace. We'll be touching more on that later in the video, but today we're going to create this holographic shader in Blender and as a small bonus, I'm also going to walk you through how I made this engine here. Now, of course, you can use the shader on whatever you want, but I think it looks really cool on complex models like this one. I've got a client project right now where I'm rendering some futuristic scenarios and for one of them, I needed a big holographic projection of an engine and since in my vast expansive, highly organized assets. I did not have a holographic engine. I modeled one, made a holographic shader, and here we are. Since modeling this thing was actually pretty simple, I went ahead and recorded the process, and that will be included here as a short time lapse with commentary. Only takes about five minutes, but the shader itself is quite simple as you can see from the node tree here. Just kidding, I don't think I've ever made a node tree half that size. This one is from the node master themselves, Aaron Dale. Here's the actual tree, pretty small. Uh, now, if you're in a rush, go ahead and pause the video, copy what you see here. But if you don't know what you're doing, I would highly recommend watching the process so that you can learn a few things and not have to rely so much on those darn Blender YouTubers that take so long to start the video. All right, all right, all right. So here we are modeling an engine with no reference images. Uh, I'll say right off the bat, I used a edge rip hotkey or command there to, to create these fins and I am fully aware that the fins would not switch directions so those of you who are engine experts I do apologize um, but yeah gonna be doing a lot of very simple commands here I'll, I'll talk a little bit about them as I go but I think most of my viewers are probably familiar with these types of things if you did want to watch it in close to real time you can use the speed controls on YouTube to drop it down to I think like a 0.25 or so um, but yeah this is gonna be just me duplicating a lot of circles, scaling things, moving things back. Use a little proportional editing there to bring out those kind of point thin things. And then here I'm just taking some parts of the model and rotating it to give it this spiral look, duplicating that. Again, no reference images here, so really just free balling it, seeing what looks good. Duplicating little things, scaling them out, starting at the front, just kind of moving towards the back. Um, yeah. Really, uh, really simple commands here. This is the type of modeling I do a lot where I really rely heavily on things like the solidify modifier, the skin modifier to quickly build out forms. What I'm doing here is just trying to extrude some random parts, random directions to give it a little bit of irregularity so that it's not just a bunch of concentric circles, which is what it is for the most part. But I was liking the way that looked, so left it, uh, keeping my little turbine type piece there. Once you kind of build out a few pieces, you can really start to duplicate them and the process speeds up even faster. So I would highly encourage anyone who's enjoying this to give it a shot on their own. I'd love to see what kind of engine or whatever it is you come up with that you could make with similar techniques because yeah, it's just a lot of fun. And, and for what this, what I made this for was not going to be that big or visible, so it didn't really need to be super accurate or anything. I just wanted it to kind of look like it had a lot of detail. Whether or not it, it did didn't matter too much. And of course, I did end with quite a bit of detail, but not a ton of thought really put into anything. And I think that's why this type of modeling is fun, is that you just kind of go at it, try to you know avoid deleting too much stuff, just stick with what you got and move on because everything you make just adds more detail. And you might not like the way it's looking in the middle of the process, but by the end of it, you can definitely end with a really cool looking model, which I was pretty happy with how this turned out. So here I am just duplicating, extruding, scaling, uh, keeping my origin in that middle point so that I can always scale about that point so that everything stayed nice and centered. But just again, keeping some irregularity by deleting different parts of the model to you know, it's, it's, there's not any rhyme or reason to, to what's going on here, but you know, it all turns out working all right. So I wanted to add some more fine detail there. I used a wireframe modifier to do that, but was looking a little bit too busy. So tried to just randomly select some vertexes on that new model and delete them, putting a skin modifier on there instead to just add all those little details, but wasn't liking the way that looked. So decided I would just select, um, less of the model. So not the whole thing, duplicate it add in the wireframe and then bring that back over on top of it just so that not everything had the wireframe. And then what I was doing here was adding some little pipe details, more just kind of 
you know, <laughs> not, not sure what they are, little gas pipes or something like that. Just again, it's, it was all just to kind of look cool. Um, so putting a little bit of thought, you know, I have seen a jet engine before, you know, kind of what it looks like, but, um, a lot of people will always tell you to use reference images, but in some cases it's fun to not use a reference image because then you're just not really thinking too much about what you're doing and you just kind of go for a, a cool look. So uh, right there using the skin modifier to create those little rings that became a nice little detail, I thought. And then here making a, a circle with a specified amount of vertices to create this little fin shape. Uh, I had some normals facing the wrong way there, so shift N to recalculate those. Sometimes when they're separate parts, so you need to um, manually flip them. So just adding that detail in there. Maybe that would be kind of the little blast adjuster. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. Thing that goes in the back where the the jet is controlled. I don't know. I'm trying to explain what all these parts are when clearly they are nothing. But they look good twisty. So doing a little twisty twisty there. And then just adding in an empty to parent it all together. And this is where I went into making the shader. But we are going to hop out of the time lapse and do that in real time because that's a little more complex, requires potentially some more explanation. So let's go ahead and jump over to that part. Now, until we can just teleport a holographic portfolio of our work into the homes of our clients, we need a little something called a website. Squarespace is a fantastic way to build out an online portfolio fast and easy so that instead of just floating around on social media, you can have a place to call home. Of course, with Squarespace, you can connect your socials so everything flows nicely together. But with a website of your own, you can create something unique to wow those potential clients and turn that little blender hobby of yours into a real business. When I started free Freelancing, I knew I needed a website and I'll give you one guess where I started. That's right, Squarespace. Head on over to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, tack a dirk on to the end of that URL to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now, back to the tutorial. All right, so holographic shaders. What I have here is the engine model that we just created and uh, it's been parented to an empty just so that I could move it around if I so choose to do so. Uh, but besides that, I'm in a pretty much default Blender scene. Uh, if I switch into rendered view here, you can see I am in cycles. You may be in Eevee. Uh, we are going to be building the shader in cycles, but it works pretty decent in Eevee. And I'll show you, you know, a couple of settings that you might need to change for that. But looking pretty good here. Uh, the only thing I might do is go ahead and add in a material to this because right now everything's got no material. Um, so I'm going to select everything with A and then just, you know, make sure that you have a piece of your mesh selected, press new, and then I'm going to call this hollow. And uh, we can just, you know, change the color to see that that has been applied there. And then control L to link materials. And now they should all have that holographic material. Uh, now what I might do just so that I can see things as I'm working a little bit better is add in a plane and add in a area light. So let's just move this up. Now, you know, when I'm, uh, you know, messing around with the shaders, if I turn everything off, I can still sort of see what's going on here. Um, so that is our basic setup there. Now, what I want to do is pull down a new window and uh, we'll turn off our overlays here because now we've got that pretty much set up how we want. I will drop my world strength down to zero so that it's nice and black. We can really see that holographic shader pop. Um, but this I'm going to change to a shader editor. Um, so what we have here is the um, shader that we started to set up in the sidebar there, but I don't want any of this. I'm going to start with something else. So I'm going to press X to delete the principle. So now we just have our black nothing material there. So holographic shaders, they're bright, they're light, they're made of light, they're emissive. So I'm going to add in a shader, emission shader. And when I plug that in here, we will see that we have a nice kind of shadeless flat emission object, which is kind of cool, but um, I'm really sort of losing the form of my object. I'm not getting all those details because everything's just a flat color. Um, so I want to add in a way to sort of, you know, have Blender know that there's different things happening, different parts of the mesh. And I'm going to do that by adding in an input and that will be a Fresnel node. So if, for example, I were to plug this Fresnel into the color here, then we could see that um, now, you know, basically with this factor, it's it's taking values, it's it's looking for values between zero and one, or sorry, it's it's outputting values between zero and one. So zero corresponds to black, white to one. Um, so if we adjust this value, we can kind of see what that Fresnel node is doing. And I won't get into the 
science or physics of it because I don't really know what it is. But um, basically, it's kind of like looking for like glancing angles. I don't know. Read the Wikipedia page, <laughs> or maybe I'll read the Wikipedia page. But but yeah, basically, it's kind of like you know. The, the easiest way to explain it is just to you, you see what it's doing okay it looks it looks cool so we've got the fresnel there i basically want to just drop that to a value where i've got some nice edges highlighted um and the rest of it is black now this is kind of cool we're definitely getting the look we want you know you could also plug that into the strength because that would work similarly um you know you can change the color too here to something you like you know go ahead and you know it starts to get a little more exciting once you add color into it so uh, you know maybe i'll go for like a a minty green color there or something um, but that's kind of cool now the only thing is that I can't see through this at all so this still looks like a it doesn't really look like it's made of light because we can't see through anything so to see through things we would usually add in a shader and that would be a transparent shader so if we shift control click on that transparent shader you can see that's what it does it doesn't do anything it's just transparent um, now if you can't shift control click that might be because you don't have the node wrangler add-on we'll use that a couple times here but you don't have to download it comes with blender but go ahead and turn on the node wrangler add-on so shift control click lets you kind of preview things uh, now you might have noticed with this transparent shader you've got all this black areas and what that is is that so the blender doesn't render more things than it needs to it by default has a pretty low value set down here in the light paths for transparent at eight um, but if you have a lot of transparent objects going through each other you might need to turn that up so uh, turning that up will get rid of those black things, but you know, sometimes I think that is a kind of cool look, leaving some of the, the blackness in there. Um, but anyway, so we want to, you know, instead of having, obviously we don't want it fully transparent because that's definitely not showing off our model. And we don't want it just this because like we said, we can't see through it. So we want to kind of mix between those. And the way I'll mix between them is going to be with a shader, mix shader that does exactly what it sounds like. It mixes two shaders together. So if we plug this one in here, Let's just give it as Fresnel for now. So the way the mix shader works is that with this value set to one, it's going to be the second input here. And if it's set to zero, it's gonna be the first input. So now instead of using this Fresnel to control the strength or something, I'm gonna have it control this factor here. And now remember if we look back at this, we've got um, kind of the bulk of our model is black, which is a value of zero, which on the mix shader could be this emission and the edges are white, so the value corresponding to white would be one. So if we look at this all together, um, one is transparent. So now all it's doing is making the edges transparent. So I actually wanna flip these around. So let's do that like that. And now that's the look we're getting, which is much cooler, much closer to what we're going for. Um, so that's looking fine dandy. You know, you could bump up the strength here to make this a little more powerful looking, which I think looks nice. Um, but now we can have a new issue, which is that we can sort of see too much. It's kind of, it's kind of busy. There's too much happening, too much going on. Um, and, you know, I would like for things in the front to be just a little bit more, you know, forward, literally, um, than the things in the back and, and sort of have it, you know, fade a little bit um, from front to back. And the way I'm going to do that is by instead of just using this transparent shader, I can mix that transparent shader with something else that would help me occlude the things in the back. And we can do that with just our basic diffuse shader. So if you're familiar with the diffuse shader, you can think of it as kind of the most basic shader in Blender. Um, which yeah, it's, it's just basically a, yeah, it's like a, just a regular, regular old shader, but great for occluding things. So obviously with a diffuse shader, you can't see anything behind something else that also has a diffuse shader. Um, so what I want to do is just mix these together, the transparent and the diffuse, because I don't want anything to be fully transparent. So I'm going to take my mix shader here and duplicate it. So shift D to do that. And let's just plug that in here and plug this in here and then shift control left click to preview that mix shader. Um, now this mix shader currently is set to zero, which is gonna be pulling from the first input, which is that transparent, which is why we cannot see anything. Um, and if we set it to one, of course, again, it would be fully diffuse. So I'm just gonna find sort of a nice balance here, something in the middle. So maybe like a, you know, I still want it to be mostly transparent, but of course I want some of that kind of cloudy, ghostly effect we're getting when we mix the diffuse into it. Um, so I think something like that looks pretty nice. You know, you could bump this diffuse all the way up to a value of one, so it's just a little bit brighter. And you could change the color of that, but I think for now I will rely pretty much purely on the color coming from the emission here. So I think that looks pretty good. Um, now we want to mix back in our emission. So let's go ahead and shift control left click on this, 
And now we have that all back together and you can see we've got kind of a, you know, I know that in real life or, you know, why, why are we even talking about real life? We're in 3D software. That's the whole point. So you don't have to follow the real, the real life rules. But, you know, because we've got that diffuse in, now, in there, now this holographic shader is kind of getting some of the effect of that light that we added. You know, you could turn that down if you did not want to see that. But I think it, I think it is kind of cool that, you know, you can add lighting you're seeing in the holograph would kind of work with that. Um, but I'll leave that to you. You know, maybe we turn that down to zero for now, just so it's nice and bright. And to really make this thing pop, we could actually go down here into our, our render settings and add in um, a look. So by default, it's at none. I can change that to um, very high contrast though. And that's going to make it super duper pop and you know you could of course adjust the color here as much as you want but i think i'll leave it at that um so this is pretty much all together feel free to drop off here if you're feeling good about your holographic shader um, but the last thing i want to do is just add in sort of some scan lines and the way i'm going to do that is with a wave texture so let's do a texture make that a wave texture and then um, to, you know, if we shift control click on that, we can see what that's doing. It's just kind of randomly adding this wave everywhere. Um, but I don't want it to be so random. It's, you know, right now, if we press control T actually, we can add, we can see that, you know, by default it uses this generated input. Um, now in some cases you would want to UV unwrap objects, but since this is, you know, we don't want to go through and unwrap all those parts. I'm going to use, a lot of times I'll use the object input, which works decently in some cases, but uh, what I want to actually use here is the camera input here. I don't use it a ton, but what that's going to do is just align the texture to where I'm looking. So if you're looking through a camera, it'll obviously do it with that. Or in my case, just looking through the viewport, it's going to align it to what I'm seeing there. So now you can have this go whichever way you want, but I'm going to pop this down to the Y input. And, and yeah, now it's going that direction. So now whichever way we look, we kind of get a nice scan line effect. If you have it, you know, any other way, sometimes it, it just, it sort of looks a little busy. You kind of lose the effect. So that's why I like to use the camera input there. Um, now the last thing we would want to do, okay, so here's our regular shader. So now we want certain areas to be fully transparent so we can kind of really see those lines. So I'm going to add in one more mixed shader. And then, you know, with this set to a factor of 0.5, well, actually what we're going to use is this wave texture. So let's plug the factor from the wave texture into that mix shader. And now you can see exactly what's happening. Um, now, since we don't have anything in this second input, it's just doing fully black, which is going to look about the same because we don't have our light turned on. Or let's see if we turned our light. Yeah, let's turn our light back on. So yeah, it's just, it's fully black because that's what that second shader is. Um, but selecting back onto my holographic material, I want the second shader to be transparent so that we can see through it. Now you could add in another transparent shader here. What I'm going to do is just take the same one I had over there and plug that into the second input. So now we kind of have that transparent effect and we can turn our area light off or back down pretty low. And yeah, that is pretty much it. You know, feel free to address, adjust the scale of this transparent shader as much as you want. And uh, you could even do some animation here if you animated this Y value. You can make those lines kind of move. It's a little bit difficult to see here in cycles. Um, but speaking of cycles, I did want to show you really quick how you could set this shader up in Eevee. So let's switch over to Eevee. Now for Eevee, first of all, you definitely want to turn on some bloom. Looks pretty cool uh, when you've got the bloom in Eevee, especially if you crank this strength up. Looking pretty nice. But um, transparency does not work very well by default in Eevee. So, and this just renders crazy fast. It's insane. Um, but with the shader selected down here in the material options, you'd want to go, uh, for one, you probably just turn the shadow off. We're not really going to see much effect there. Um, but for the blend mode, we can change that to alpha blend. And now Blender's actually going to uh, take advantage of the transparent things that are happening. Um, so that's a pretty quick way to get this shader working in Eevee is just to go down here into this blend mode and change that to alpha blend. But that is about it. I hope you all enjoyed the transparent holographic shader education um definitely you know if you make an engine or use a holographic shader really anywhere i would love to see it tag me on instagram or linkedin or twitter or wherever wherever you're at i would love to see the results and uh, if you are interested in getting this full file with the shader and everything in it then uh, you can get on to the patreon and i will be hosting the file there for sure so hope you all enjoyed this one i'll look forward to seeing what you come up with Thanks for watching, like, and subscribe, and uh, I will see you next time in the holographic metaverse, potentially. Uh, anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.